Hello, this is Joey, and this is my channel, Game of Authors. And I grabbed that box as a little reminder, because the last two videos I've made, I uh, started off by saying this is Joey, a Game of Channels. So for some reason, my brain can't process that the name of my channel is Game of Authors and not Game of Channels. So this was a handy little reminder. Game of Authors. So <clears throat> I thought it'd be fun to pull one of the cards out and have a, a particular author, maybe for each video. At least I'm going to do it on this video. And since we're in nonfiction November and I'm doing the nonfiction uh, book tag, I'm going to show you Washington Irving, who was a great writer of fiction, but also wrote nonfiction. He wrote a biography of George Washington. And he was listed by Steve Donahue as one of his 15 favorite writers. So do yourself a favor and read some Washington Irving. Uh, just want to say a quick thing. I'd already made this video once on Friday, and it didn't turn out just right. And um, I didn't get to remake it. And I haven't posted any videos because I got sidelined by a uh, four-day trip to the hospital. And uh, I'm going to make a video about my hospital stay uh, later. So I'm not going to talk about that now, except that uh, to say that I'm so thankful for so many uh, great booktube channels that did my last tag, my original tag. Uh, Kelly at Books I'm Not Reading did the tag, and then Jason at Old Blues Chapter and Verse. And I had so much fun watching everybody else do the tag while I was there at the hospital. And then one night, my phone just lit up like a Christmas tree with all these new subscribers, and I thought, man, what's going on? And I saw, uh, and I realized that Steve Donahue did the tag. And in his video, uh, he talked about my video for like the first five minutes. And that was just such a kind and gracious thing of him to do. And, and I really appreciate that. Uh, and so I just wanted to uh, give a shout out to uh, Steve as well as Jason and Kelly. And uh, also Megan, who I had tagged, said she's going to do the tag, but she hasn't done it yet. And I've seen several other people doing the, uh, and that was the I love the book, I love the movie tag. So thank you to all of you who enjoyed that tag and have taken it from there. Uh, I really appreciate it. So for today, I'm doing the nonfiction on booktube tag. And so I'm just going to jump into these prompts. <clears throat> uh, one question is, so the, question number one, how much nonfiction do you read? And uh, one thing I wanted to point out in the way I count nonfiction, I'm always curious about like poetry and plays because they're in nonfiction category at the library. But uh, when I'm thinking of nonfiction, I always count plays as fiction. Uh, regardless, even if it's based on a true story, I count a play as fiction. With poetry, it's a little different, and I'll give you an example. I read two poems last month by uh, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, or a couple months ago. One was poems on slavery, uh, which were, um, I would qualify that as nonfiction. Those are poems based on slavery, but they didn't really tell a story per se. But I also read The Courtship of Miles Standish, which is a narrative poem uh, that tells a story, and so in my mind, that's fiction. I don't know how you guys uh, classify uh, poetry and plays, uh, but I just want to make that little uh, uh, caveat there as to how I do it. So uh, for question number one, how much nonfiction do you read? I looked back, I've read 110 books this year, and 51 of those are were nonfiction, which surprised me that it was that high, and that's about 45%. Looking back over my history on Goodreads, uh, it was a higher a higher percentage. My nonfiction was at about 55%. So I'm about half and half there on fiction and nonfiction. And I kind of looked through this year to see like what genres within nonfiction. And I came up with biography, history, theology, memoir, poetry, social commentary, political, sermons, true crime, Bible commentary, film, television, baseball, and essays. So that's the great thing about nonfiction. Uh, there's so many different subgenres uh, and so many different things you can be interested in that qualifies nonfiction. So uh, uh, I've read quite a bit and, and I enjoy to read a lot of nonfiction. Number two, what kind of nonfiction videos do you make or do you want to make on BookTube? Um, so far I've made none because this is only my fourth video. Um, and I don't really have any uh, desire to make anything in particular, just whatever I happen to be reading at the time. If it's nonfiction, then I will uh, probably talk about it in a video. Uh, number three, what is your favorite subgenre of nonfiction? Uh, what I really like uh, and what I've enjoyed reading through the years are books by uh, Christian thinkers. Uh, some examples would be like Tim Keller, C.S. Lewis, uh, Malcolm Muggridge, uh, Os Guinness. Uh, and here's, uh, for example, I mentioned this in my newbie tag, The Call by Os Guinness was a book that was really influential to me and actually kind of got me started 
uh, reading more and uh, interested in reading. So I like uh, books by Christian thinkers. Um, that would be my favorite. I mean, I like a lot of nonfiction. Uh, number four, do you have a favorite nonfiction book? Well, my favorite would be the Bible, uh, which I typically read in the ESV. This is the one I read the most. Um, but I grew up on the King James Version, and so uh, I, love, I love to read the Bible. Um, uh, another uh, favorite nonfiction, though, aside from the Bible, um, I, something that occurred to me is there's a lot of nonfiction books that I love, but I, it's very rare that I reread nonfiction as opposed to fiction if there's a, a great novel or play that I love. I'll go back and read that time and again, but, um, but it's less common for me to do that with nonfiction. But one book that I have read three times uh, is called Manhunt, The 12-Day Chase for Lincoln's Killer by James L. Swanson. And that is an amazing, engaging story, and it is written like a novel. So if, you, if you're not one to read nonfiction, but you like a good novel or a good story, Pick up Manhunt by James L. Swanson because you read that book and you are right there in the swamps with John Wilkes Booth as he's hiding and trying to get away from all these pursuers uh, after the dirty deed which he performed in assassinating uh, the country's leader. But man, what a book. What a book. I've read it twice. I've listened to it on audiobook. Um, I could probably pick it up tomorrow and, and start it again and I would, I would enjoy it. Uh, Swanson has written several books about, uh, he wrote a book about the assassination of Lincoln, assassination of Kennedy. He recently wrote a book for kids about the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. And he also wrote a book that, called Bloody Crimes, which was interesting. It was also from the Civil War, and it kind of paralleled the journey of Lincoln's casket from Washington, D.C. to, uh, I believe, Springfield, Illinois, the funeral procession. At the same time, chronicling the journey of uh, Jefferson Davis as he was trying to escape from the authorities. And so you have these parallel stories going on. That was another great book, but my favorite is Manhunt. So that's uh, one of my favorite nonfiction books of all time. Number five, what do you think keeps people from wanting to read more nonfiction? Um, this is pretty similar to what most people say. I think school, by and large, sucks the joy out of learning. Uh, we homeschool our kids for a portion of the time. They're, uh, they're in school right now. Um, but that was a big part of why we homeschooled is we had a lot of books here. We had a lot of great literature and we were trying to foster a love of learning. Um, and you know, I just, for whatever reason, there's a lot of great teachers and I don't blame the teachers, but something about the environment at school, um, makes it, 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 it doesn't foster a love for nonfiction. I can tell you that. So that would be my reason. Um, and I, and I know I'm painting with a broad brush. There are, I'm sure there are other examples who, who would say differently, but I think, I think that's a lot of people's experience at least. Number six, why do you like nonfiction? Uh, I like nonfiction because if I want to learn about, about a particular topic, uh, a particular time in history, I mean, you, you read nonfiction. I, I, I enjoy Wikipedia, but if I have a topic I really want to uh, get a hold of, I want to go read a book about it. I like nonfiction to sharpen my thinking, uh, like I mentioned, um, you know, books by, by thinkers, I, and not just Christian thinkers, that's probably, those are the ones I've read the most, but I'll, I'll read book by, books by atheist thinkers, uh, and um, whatever, you know, whatever the topic may be, I just like books that sharpen my thinking and, and maybe challenge the way I'm thinking, and, and ultimately help me to be a better human being, a better Christian, a better uh, um, better understand the world as it exists. So, um, and the other reason I like nonfiction is, uh, to just, I like reading historical nonfiction to connect to different time periods. I, I, I don't want to be trapped in this one year. I'm part of humanity, which has been in existence for many years. And, and I want to know what was going on in those time periods. What were people thinking? How did they relate to one another? Uh, because so much of human relations is timeless, and it's uh, and and I just love connecting to those uh, those periods of the past. Uh, that's just amazing. Uh, number seven. What is a nonfiction book you've read because of BookTube? And that would be uh, "Girl Meets God" by Lauren Winner, which was recommended by Jason at Old Blues Chapter and Verse. I think he recommended it. Lauren Winner as one of his favorite writers. I believe that was the video 
where I saw that book. And I um, started reading that book. I'm currently reading, and I'm not done with it, and, and I'm really enjoying it. So uh, thank you to Jason for recommending that book, Girl Meets God by Lauren Winter. And a side note there, I will say, um, uh, one of the things she talks about in there is that for Lent one year, she was such, she was such a reader that she read all the time, and her priest uh, in the Anglican Church, her priest, uh, challenged her to give up reading for Lent one year, and she did. And the idea of Lent is to give up something that you really love uh, as, a, as a symbolic gesture of, I love this thing so much, but God, I love you even enough to give that thing up. And I was so inspired by reading that that I actually took a break. I, 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 I didn't wait for Lent. I just took a 30-day break from reading. And during that time, um, and, and it was really beneficial for me, spiritually beneficial. And one of the things that came out of that for you listeners is I started, since I wasn't reading, I started watching some booktube, more booktube than I had been, and uh, decided to take the plunge and go ahead and create this booktube channel. So uh, that was something that came from reading that book recommended by booktube channel. Number eight, what is the best nonfiction book you've read lately? Um, the best one that I've read lately was, I, I'm going to pick one book, Camelot's End, Kennedy versus Carter, and the Fight that Broke the Democratic Party by John Ward. Fascinating book about the 1980 election, uh, the Democratic nomination, where you had Jimmy Carter, the incumbent, and something unusual happened in that a, a pretty big name within the party challenged the incumbent uh, during the Democratic nom nomination, and that is uncommon uh, for an incumbent, uh, I, I believe, according to the book, it's, it's relatively uncommon for an incumbent president to uh, be challenged in, the, um, in his party nomination. And kind of the, the history of that, everything that took place during that election, and then kind of the, the, re, the results of that over the, the years to follow. A very, very interesting book by John Ward. Number nine, what are some of your nonfiction reading goals? Uh, not really any goals, uh, so I just picked one. Um, I have a eight-volume set of the history of the Christian Church by Philip Schaff, uh, and I've never read a single volume of it. I will scan it for reference sometimes, or just look through it for fun. But one goal is to would be to finally read one of these books, and uh, maybe even read the whole set, but it, but maybe at least read one. Um, so that's a goal. Uh, number ten: What is your advice for incorporating more nonfiction into your reading diet? Uh, I don't know if this is supposed to be specifically for me or kind of geared towards other people. Um, I don't necessarily have any advice for myself, but for others, I would say audiobooks. I think audiobooks are, are very well designed for nonfiction. And I've heard people say, I have trouble listening to audiobooks. I personally don't. I, I mean, I can listen to fiction or nonfiction. I love audiobooks. But I think um, audiobook nonfiction is easier to listen to because with nonfiction, a lot of times you're just gaining facts and information, and I'm thinking probably more specifically of like history or, um, or theology or, or uh, you know, whatever, social commentary, you know, political, whatever it may be. Um, the goal of reading nonfiction a lot of times is to, to gain facts and, and kind of dig, and I think, uh, I think that can be done pretty well on audiobook, as opposed to fiction where you're kind of following a story and you're trying to listen to the prose and and sometimes, you know, that might be a little harder, but, but, but I think if you like nonfiction, try some audiobooks. Those are great. Uh, bonus, give some recommendations of nonfiction booktube channels that you love. I don't really know enough to say. I don't know. Uh, I know there are some that are geared towards nonfiction, but uh, the one I would say is that I enjoy Steve Donahue when he does his library tours uh, and when he does the tour of the room with a lot of the nonfiction uh, books and I've enjoyed some of those, uh, but you know, just hearing him talk about the, all the many books that he's read uh, and his recommendations and and uh, his uh, love of reading and I, lo I love when he laughs as he's talking. You know, it's just really enjoyable. So uh, that that would be one I'd recommend would be Steve Donahue. So I think I answered all the questions there. So this is the nonfiction on BookTube tag, and I hope you enjoyed it. And thank you very much again. This is Joey, and this is Game of Authors.